Ladies and gents, this is UX and this is Germany could not win World War II by the channel of potential history. A look into why the Germans could not pull a win out of the war with the realities they found themselves in. Yeah, I think, you know, Nazis wouldn't have win uh, in uh, World War II basically because they had a massive fuel issues, fuel and resources issues. They were way too ambitious, right? They spontaneously just attacked after whatever preparation they could and just attacked everybody, right? Uh, that they, they took over France. They then they wanted to, you know, they're trying to take attack Britain and bombarded Britain lots of time, trying to take Britain. Probably that's what their goal was. Uh, after you know France and probably you know after they take over Russia, <laughs> after they took take over Russia after France, France was already occupied by Nazis. Now they want to take over Russia. And then they're going to go after Britain and so long and so forth. Yeah, they wanted to do everything, basically. Yeah, that's not a joke, especially just for one country. Uh, fuel issues would rise up like it did. So I think, you know, they were way too ambitious. One guy taking on everybody was not going to work ever. So, yeah, it's that. And also, you know, they, their vision and their ideology kind of limited them, I guess. So, yeah, well, let's always one. Remember, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description. Check out the castle playlist. Check out the end cards in here. Let's watch it. There, I finished fine tuning my what if machine. It can answer any what if question accurate to within one tenth of a plausibility unit. Who wants the machine to show them an alternate reality? Oh, oh, I want to know if Germany wins if Hitler stops making decisions. <laughs> has a question for the what if machine i have one do they win if they mars produce the mouse tank oh the big tank <laughs> no nope. machine show me what would happen if they took moscow ah. that's so plausible i can't believe it People love rooting for the underdog. These stories strike a chord with us at a very basic level, and you can tell this by how popular these stories are in media. This also translates to real-world stories, although real life does not have a plot that always turns in the underdog's favor. So there's this kind of romanticism connected to fighting for a lost cause that a lot of people assign to a lot of real-world groups. One of these you see talked about a lot is the German army in World War II, that if only dumb Hitler hadn't been in charge, or if different choices were made, that the war would have turned out different. And a lot of these arguments seem to hold water on the surface, but upon ref No, not really. I don't care how Hitler was making fucked up decision. That was his whole ideology. Without Hitler, how does even World War II work, right? Okay, I guess people are saying, what if Hitler stopped making decision in the midway? Then their whole structure falls apart, right? Hitler was the thing that they cling on to. Hitler spew out his ideas and people basically cling on to that. Hitler was, wasn't the original one, basically. It was the whole uh, group of people during this time, Nazis, basically. But still, Hitler was at the center of it, right? Without Hitler at the helm, none of this works, right? Without him being at the helm, people would not fight as hard as they did. Uh, he was basically the, you know, basically morale guy of the Nazis. Without him, it really doesn't work. First of all, one country, Germany, taking over everybody, even though I know the history of them, Prussia, and you know, how they are military straight and everything. I understand that. But even at the scale that they did, right, taking on France and just, you know, being that powerful, wouldn't have worked without Hitler. So what if Hitler was not there? Then the Nazis would have fallen apart. No way it would have worked. You can't really put it on to the, you know, paper shit and just, you know, put in stats and think, like, if, you know, if Hitler didn't make this, 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 this decision... It would have worked. Yeah, but without Hitler, none of it would have worked. He was pretty crucial to the whole thing, whole ideology, whole, you know, Nazis as whole. Reflection mostly miss the point or do not make a significant enough change to sway anything. These are my favorite how Germany could have won scenarios and how they're wrong. <laughs> Just in Moscow. This is the most funny thing, right? Because it implies that, you know, if you just take Moscow, Russia's done, right? Russia falls down. That's how easy Russians are. Yeah, Napoleon thought the same thing, right? We saw the Napoleonic War. He went all the way in, just like Hitler mentality, didn't prepare much afterwards. Ah, winter. Before winter, we'll be, you know, we, we'll have Russia with us. We'll be living inside some kind of a, you know, Russian building and just chilling there. Because we would have been warm because we would have taken over Moscow. 
That doesn't work, right? Russians burned Moscow and just ran away when Napoleon came. Napoleon did take the Moscow, but it didn't achieve nothing. Russians were still there. Then winter came and there, uh, then the disaster, everybody knows it. So just taking over Moscow doesn't do shit. I hear this one all the time, that if the Germans had just driven onto Moscow and taken it, the Russians would have capitulated. But it is rarely backed up with evidence as to why. Even in the memoirs of German generals after the war, they constantly mention that the drive to Moscow would have meant victory in the East. And I think the reason for this is that they model the Russian campaign after the French campaign. In the French campaign in 1940, the French surrender once Paris is cut off from its forces and looks like it's about to fall. Using this model, a lot of people think that the exact same would apply to Russia. The only problem with this is Russia is a whole different animal, both politically and geographically. Stalin was going to put every man, woman, and child in the Soviet Union between him and the advancing Germans. And this is exemplified by the way the Red Army fought the war, often trading casualties for time. So if Moscow was taken, sure, it's a political and also logistical defeat, given that the rail network was centered around it. Yeah, at the Napoleonic times, Russian leader wasn't even crazy like Stalin. So, I mean, that's another layer to it. Like, Stalin would have happily just throw his uh, people's civilians as casualties just to stop Germans. That's another layer to it. And uh, during the, you know, Napoleonic times, I think they ran away to St. Petersburg. Peter the Great made sure that there is another place that people can run from Moscow to. So, uh, yeah, no, it wouldn't have worked. But no way do I think Stalin is just going to shrug and say, well, we tried after Moscow was taken. <laughs> Seriously. And with that, we would probably see the Soviet Union fighting to the bitter end, just like the Germans did in reality. This is also backed up by real-world history from Napoleon's Russia campaign in 1812, where he went on to take Moscow but still lost the war. Russia is such a large and vast country that they have the ability to trade casualties. I don't know, I'm imagining, you know, Hitler basically like, yeah, we take the Moscow and then Russia falls. Then they take the Moscow and then Stalin just, you know, messaged him. Do you know the definition of insanity? I'm a local essay. <laughs> and land at a higher rate than any other country can. And therefore, the normal rules of war, such as taking the capital and ensuring victory, do not apply. Are they not seeing this? Another commonly heard point is that Hitler made terrible decisions and he should have just listened to his generals. Now I'm not here to defend Adolf Hitler, he's a crazy genocidal maniac, let's not make two ways about it. But this isn't always the case. For example, Hitler and the High Command were all in agreement on invading Russia. They all very much wanted to, in their eyes, destroy communism and save Germany, as Hitler laid out in his book. But once this effort was undertaken, Hitler and his generals began to disagree at times on what moves needed to be made. And once the war is over, many generals in their memoirs begin to claim that Hitler made all the bad decisions, and that if he had just listened to them, the war would have been won. Yeah, okay. And one example of this I already hinted at in the former point. Hitler's generals were convinced that taking Moscow would end the war for many erroneous reasons I listed previously. For Hitler, Moscow was a general direction in which to head, but was not the final objective. For him, the resources in the Ukraine and the oil fields beyond were a much more important target. And given Germany's oil shortages, this is a good example of where Hitler was right. See, that that shows you that Hitler knew better than his generals. Like, generals are thinking stupid. First of all, Hitler probably knows that just taking Moscow doesn't do shit because I realized what Napoleon did and what happened to him. He probably knows that. Uh, but he's only looking at the Russia like how a wolf sees somebody else, right? Like, I need to feed. He, they needed resources. And they saw Russia and just, you know, Russia, Ukraine, basically. And they just saw that all the resources they can give. So that's what Hitler was seeing. Because he needed to take resources to continue. Otherwise, he falls, which actually happened, right? I mean, uh, the way he just started the war with whatever resources he could, whatever he achieved was already way too much than he should have. He got lucky in certain places, probably, sure, you can think it like that. But his approach was already way too much from the start, right? He was eventually going to reach to this point where he's out of resources. One guy taking on everybody like that was, you know, bound to fail. But he was still trying to take resources. That's why he tried to take Russia, not just to take Moscow, so the war is over. And, you know, it's stupid to think that, you know, Hitler didn't listen to his general. He probably did, but he doesn't have to agree on everything, right? It's not a democracy in Hitler's case and you know Hitler probably was a bit smarter than his generals so you know Hitler and his you know effed upness basically uh, also saw things like that like I need resources not to take Moscow just to you know win the war against Russia because that wouldn't have worked right and his generals were wrong and actually a lot of Hitler's so-called mistakes start to make a whole lot more sense once you put it into the context of Germany's fuel shortages 
And if you want more information on this, Tick did an excellent video on Germany's oil problem that you should really check out. Another example of this sentiment being wrong is Operation Citadel in 1943. Hitler's generals convinced him that an attack on the Kursk bulge would cripple the Red Army and renew Germany's initiative in the war. Hitler saw this plan as very flawed, though, famously saying, Every time I think about Operation Citadel, my stomach turns over. And seeing how poorly this turned out for the Germans, his premonition was eerily correct. Now, if this was the caricature of Hitler always overriding his generals that is commonly seen, Citadel would have been called off before it was launched. Now, these are just two quick examples, and yes, there are times, especially later in the war, where Hitler overrules his generals with poor decisions. The Battle of the Bulge comes to mind. But early in the war, when these decisions really count, Hitler is many times making the right decisions when overruling his generals or going along with them in agreement of a common goal. Yeah. So Hitler should have just listened to his generals and he would have won the war is a moot point. Because Seriously. many times he did and his generals were wrong, and many times he didn't and he turned out to be right. It's all Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler. Seriously, I mean, the, there's a reason the guy was in charge, right? He wasn't some moron. He had the military mind. So they're just saying that, I mean, you know, basically he was, you know, ruled by force, but, you know, so, uh, he overruled his general lots of times, but, you know, it's one guy cannot control everything. That's the true everywhere, whether it's king or some dictator like Hitler. So, you know, even though he opposed certain decisions, certain things still, you know, happen because his, his generals wanted them and he probably gave in to that because he knows he can't just alienate his generals. But still, I mean, there are lots of things, like he said, Citadel and things like that, where his generals were wrong. And he knew this was a disaster and turned out to be a disaster. This is actually a point I used to subscribe to. <laughs> Just a very off. honest critique that easy? of the German war economy is that it was not on the right footing. And people make this argument usually saying things like, Germany should have just made more Panzer IVs instead of pouring resources into the Tiger. Or, Germany should have built the Luftwaffe back up so they could regain air superiority. And I will give you that the German war economy in many places was an absolute nightmare. John Parshall does an excellent lecture on tank production in World War II and really highlights how backwards the German production process was for armored vehicle manufacturing, and mentions how that knowledge can be applied to other types of war manufacturing. And although once Spear takes over, production is streamlined to a degree, and munitions and weapons production goes up year by year, it's not near where it needs to be to fight this attritional war. So obviously, the solution is to just streamline production, sort of how you see in the American model, and this would have given Germany a better chance in the war. Although this is a good criticism, it misses the core issue. The biggest thing Germany was running low on from 1942 onward is, as I mentioned before, oil. And larger yeah. numbers of tanks and planes wouldn't be any good if there was no fuel to run them. Also, Germany was having manpower shortages as early as 1942 or 43, and along with fuel to run these machines, you need people to crew them. These are just two issues that cannot be remedied by streamlining production. At a certain point, Germany is just going to be out of oil and out of men. Yeah. And no amount of additional tanks or planes would operationally be possible. What's the matter, run out of gas? Kind of embarrassing. <laughs> it's really stupid to say, just make more stuff. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Problem solved. Just make more stuff. It's that easy, right? I mean, who cares about the resources, manpower, oil and everything? This is another point that deceptively seems to make a lot of sense, as Germany was crushed by a two-front war. It stands to reason that if Japan and Germany through their alliance had coordinated an attack on Russia, they would have won. And that may honestly be true. A big boost to the defense of Moscow came after Russian troops from Siberia were sent west after the Russo-Japanese non-aggression pact. The only problem with this is that coordination did not and was never going to happen. Germany and Japan were allies by circumstance and shared no real common goals with each other. And in fact, they're operating in opposition to each other at times. German training of Chinese troops in the 30s as they were fighting the Japanese is a direct example of this. In short, neither side was going to stick out its neck for the other. In fact, Russia as a common enemy was probably the only instance in which they would have, and even then they did not. The reason for Japan not wanting to do this is mostly colored by the Japanese experience against the Soviets at the Battle of Konkangol, please forgive my pronunciation, where the Red Army gave the Imperial Army a very bloody nose in an undeclared border conflict. This incident convinced the Japanese to not go through with any action that would provoke the Soviet Union as they did not want war with them since they were already fighting China and would soon be fighting the United States. This avoidance of provoking the Soviet Union went far enough that during the war in the Pacific between Japan and the United States, the Japanese refused to sink any U.S. merchant ships headed to the Soviet Union. 
So, the Japanese attacking the Soviet Union directly flies in the face of the intentions and characteristics of the Japanese High Command, to the point where it strays out of potential history Kill yourself. into the realm of fantasy. You have screwed me again, Japan. Yeah, so basically Japan is not stupid, right? I mean, if they are fighting China and they are taking things into Pacific, knowing full well that this will basically invoke, uh, you know, basically cause USA to attack them as well, that's already too front. Now they're going to make Russia their enemy. The thing that happened to Germany would have happened to Japan like that, if they would have done that. So no way they would have gone against Russia in the Soviet Union at that point, right? So they were, you know, China, USA, that's already way too much in their hand. They were, they're not going to test things by, you know, involving another major power as Soviet Union. This is my favorite one. If they had just made, insert ridiculous design here. The okay, this is just stupid, right? This Look at this tank compared to this. Ma what was the name? I forgot the name. I remember watching this somewhere like Dark 5 video or something. This is ridiculously big tank. First of all, it's impractical, right? I mean, you know, a childish version of us will think, Oh, look at those tank. That tank can basically tear a city apart, right? No, nope, it, it's just way too big, right? It's, it's, people can see it, enemies can see it. It's, it. it's not going to move fast because it's big tank. Yeah, I get it, the armor is big, but that's not enough, right? It's, it's, it has a real disadvantage. There's a reason why people don't make that big tank even today. This is my favorite one. If they had just made, insert ridiculous design here, the war may have gone differently. And it's the idea that this thing, or this thing, or this thing, would somehow have single-handedly lengthened the war. There are a few fan favorites for pics of these. The one I see most often being the mouse, the ridiculous 200-ton behemoth that in reality would have been awesome target practice for allied fighter <laughs> exactly. bombers and something for allied soldiers to gawk at once it had run out of fuel and had to be abandoned. Or German jet aircraft that, although cutting edge and superior to what the allies had, still couldn't have been applied in a large scale due to the aforementioned fuel and personnel yeah. problems. Resources. And the list for these things goes on and on. A personal pet peeve of mine in this category. They had ridiculous idea for things. Some of them were way too over the top, even at today's standard. You can find lots of, you know, uh, cl cl you know, declassified intel here and there where Nazis were, tr you know, trying to, you know, make something that was ridiculously overpowered and things like that here and there. You know, you know that bell thing comes to my mind, the earthquake device or whatever. You know, those were never verified, but sure, it could make sense. They were trying something like that because Nazis were really effed up. They were finding after technology. But in the end, those are all impractical because they didn't have resources to do anything. That's the thing, right? Nazis could have done something if they had resources. But they can't have resources because the way they approached this war from the start, they were about to run out in any scenario, right? I don't know how they didn't see that. I don't know how Hitler didn't see that before starting the war. Like if I do this and just so aggression immediately out of the box like this and attack everybody, I'm going to be out of resources very fast because war is going to move faster, right? I'm not going to have that much time to gather that much resources to fight from all the fronts, east and west and everywhere is the what-if question about the German atomic program and the claim that if they had applied themselves, the Germans could have come up with an atomic weapon first. Yes, scientists were not This notion, though. though, just like that of Japan invading Russia, very quickly falls into the category of fantasy yeah. once looked at for three main reasons. One, many of Germany's top scientists were expelled in the 30s for being Jewish, there automatically limiting German atomic capabilities. All the German scientists were basically went to America and worked on the you know Manhattan Project there, right? And those were German scientists. There's a reason why they were in America and not Germany, right? No, Hitler didn't want them there. So how the fuck he was going to develop uh, you know atomic bomb? And actually, many of these scientists went on to work in the American nuclear program. So to make this win scenario work, you automatically have to make the Nazis tolerant of Jews, which is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Two, the German atomic program is all but canceled by 1942. As <laughs> he started the war with attacking Warsaw, killing Jews. Now he's go suddenly going to be tolerant of them. That's not going to work. Spear put it, we got the view that the development was very much at the beginning. The physicists themselves didn't want to put much into it. Which works into my third point, that Hitler saw atomic science as Jewish science and pointed the focus of German development towards conventional weapons. So we're not even talking about an atomic race between the US and Germany, as it was barely being pursued by the Germans. 
and to give a what-if scenario about it would fly directly in the face of what Hitler stood for. And this gets into the bigger problem with this question, that even if Germany does produce these wonder weapons and extends the war, it's only going to extend it long enough to be the first country to get nuked due to the Germany first policy of the Allies. Are you making a jet plane? Hmm? Or a remote control that can turn you into super soldier? Hmm? Hmm? Or is it just another dumb tank? Now these are just a handful of points that people bring up when talking about how Germany could have won, but there are many more that I didn't go into that are equally baseless, such as the Germans should have and could have invaded England, even though the Kriegsmarine would not be able to support a large amphibious attack, and the much larger Royal Navy would have probably sunk the invading force before it even reached the shores. Yeah. Or that Barbarossa should have taken place... Hitler didn't care about the uh, sea weapons because of that, right? Uh, you know, Bismarck was a one odd thing, and even that, he wasn't sure of that. Because Royal Navy was so powerful, he wanted he didn't want to do anything with the, you know, basically uh, naval attacks because of how powerful Ro Royal Navy was. Earlier, even though it wasn't really the winter or the rainy season that stopped the Germans, it was a lack of supplies that needed to be brought up. For more info on that, check out this lecture by David Stahill. You'll see people bringing up scenario after scenario that bends reality and character motivations very widely to craft a scenario that Germany could win. But here's my point. Germany would not have won World War II no matter what way you slice it. The fact of the matter is, this is a country that is too small and too short on resources to take on the three largest world powers at once, especially given the erroneous actions and motivations they have. Basically, the Germans dealt themselves a bad hand and played it poorly. And the only way that's going to change is if you bend time and space to their liking with the benefit of 2020 hindsight. All things that are not going to happen in reality. Yeah, so basically it's that, you know, they, Germany went against the world, massive powers, and, you know, it was immediate, not slowly build up to it, immediate attack and immediate world war. Of course, they were going to, you know, go out of resources. And even if they had found resources, I still don't believe Germany would have won because they're still one entity against many major powers. So, yeah. All right, people, that was Germany could not win World War II by potential history. This was a great video. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards over the place. Check out the link cards. And yeah, I'll see you next time.